God bless you everyone. We're here again for more on Mondays. I'm going to give everyone a couple minutes to sign on as we usually do. We have a lot going on. I am not going to lie. I almost forgot about more on Mondays tonight. I have been filling in for Matias while he is in Africa. We just came back from Mexico a couple weeks ago and less than 24 hours, I believe it was, after we got back from Mexico, Matias left for Africa and he's been there for almost two weeks now. So I'm filling in for him. Filling his shoes are really, it's really big shoes to fill. I didn't realize how many different um, assignments, I guess, he he has, teachings and just counseling and and different things that he does. So I've been trying my best to, um, you know, do all the administration, everything that I usually do and um, sharing the word when Matias usually does. And so more on Mondays is something that we want to keep doing and just share a little encouraging word with those who follow our page and follow our ministry. Um, for those who are still coming in to the live video, he's still in Africa and coming home soon. So you will see your very own Evangelist Matias Rojas will be back with you for more on Mondays next week. And, um, the week after and actually after that he is going with a team to a country that is closed to Christianity it is high in persecution there's a lot going on there um, God bless you Chaya thank you for um, joining us for watching and so he's going to be with our team there's three people going with him to a country that is closed to the gospel and we have some announcements and information about that, but we can't post it on social media. So I am going to have a newsletter going out in the next uh, day or two. And so if you're not on our newsletter list and you want to know what's going on, you want to help in any way, you want to be praying for us, um, please send us your email address. You can leave it here if you want, but you can privately message us at your, your email address, or you can go to www miministries.org. I know people don't say the W's anymore. miministries.org. Once you go to um, to our website, there's a subscribe button. So you can personally message us or message the ministry. Uh, we'd love to get you on our email list. We don't send out more than one newsletter a month, if that. We've been so busy, it's actually been a couple of months. So um, we're not quite that professional yet with our, our media and everything. We don't have a cool intro video for our more on Mondays or anything yet, but, um, God bless you, Cindy. Thank you for joining us. Um, so we're going to get right into the word. I'm going to just ask the Lord to bless this time. Um, I'm not sure if Tim is going to be able to join us tonight. Um, but if he, if he does, we'll be happy to, to have him come on and, and be our normal host. But thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for more ministries and what you have given us to um, move your kingdom forward, Lord. I pray for a special covering for Matthias in Africa with Dimitri, that you would bring them home safely, that all of the work you have coming up for us, that you would just bless it and that you would guide us and lead us in your, in your name by your Holy Spirit. We pray. Amen. Um, God bless you, Ibrahim. Thank you for coming on. Actually, um, something very exciting, Matthias, before I get into the word, I did forget to say, Matthias was able to meet with the president of Burundi and his cabinet. They were able to sit down together and he was very uh, humbled and excited by it. Of course, you know, as the woman, I'm telling him every single detail about what's going on here, what Jeremiah and I are doing. Um, and he was just very, he's like, I'll tell you about it when I get home and, and the Lord is just doing amazing things. And so I'm excited. He's going to be telling me more about his meeting with the president and the, and the president's cabinet. And one of the things he just kept saying, he said that the president of Burundi is so humble and, um, that the president and his wife, his wife is actually a pastor. And so Matias has been teaching at the pastor's um, the president's wife's church, the pastor there. God bless you, Grace. Uh, one of my good friends here from Connecticut. I saw that she just signed on. So I'm just going to share a quick word 
of encouragement. It's out of 1 Peter, 1 Peter 5, 8. It says, be sober, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. That does not seem like an encouraging <laughs> scripture, but it's more of a, a warning. But there's something in here that really stands out to me. I know last week I shared a little bit about how good God is, how he is a good father, how he is a good God who wants good things for us and wants to restore us and give us abundant life and how the enemy only comes to kill, steal, and destroy and that he is the father of lies. And just being very aware about the difference because so many times we even just subconsciously will put the blame on God that, oh, God just wanted this and God only wants good things for us and he wants to he wants us to learn and grow, but, um, you know, a lot of times you hear those, those testimonies of people getting to rock bottom before they find the Lord. And, and that's not necessarily God's desire for us. He wants us to make the decision now when we're not rock bottom. He wants us to make the decision to be close to him and, and to seek his will and, um, everything that he has for us. But there's something here in this verse that st stood out to me. It says, be sober, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. It says he is seeking who he may devour. And so that almost gives you the impression, not only do you have the imagery of a lion, but he's seeking who he can devour. And so it almost gives you the idea that he can't devour anyone and everyone. He's actually looking for prey. So just as a lion would scout out and look at bunch of antelope or whatever his prey are, he's going to go and look at the pack and see who's the weak one, who's the sick one, who's the one that is away from the pack, who's vulnerable. And so you get this, this kind of imagery that the enemy can't touch us when we're in a place with God where we're under his protection, 1 John 5, 18 says, We know that whoever is begotten of God sinneth not, but he that was begotten of God keepeth himself, and the evil one toucheth him not. And when I first read that, I'm like, wait a minute, the evil one toucheth him not. The evil one cannot touch him. And I read that, I'm like, well, you know, it seems like the evil one touches me and my loved ones a lot with sickness and with disease and with emotional problems and mental problems and just issues that come against us. And, you know, the more I seek the word, I'm seeing there's a difference between persecution for being a Christian, the, the kind of trials and tribulations and persecution that we rejoice in because we know that we're doing God's work and those things are coming against us because we're doing God's work. And there's a difference between when we're opening doors or not like putting the armor on to keep ourselves from the enemy. And so that, of course, made me think of Ephesians 6, 14 through 18 talks about putting on the armor of God. It says, stand therefore, having girded your loins with truth. So the belt of truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your, your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, taking up the shield of faith, wherewith you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the evil one. And so you get that imagery again, that the evil one is going to fire the darts, but you can quench it with the shield of faith. And it goes on to say, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, with all prayer and supplication, praying at all seasons in the spirit and watching thereunto in all perseverance and supplication, for all the saints. And so you get all of this imagery from these three different scriptures. God bless you, Tim. Tim was able to join us. Tim, the scriptures so far, if you want to write them down, was um, the first one was 1 Peter 5, 8. The second one was 1 John 5, 18. And the second one was Ephesians 6, 14 through 18. So once again, that was 1 Peter 5, 8. 1 John 5, 18, and Ephesians 6, 14 through 18. Um, so if there's one thing I want you to take away from this is, you know, that's why we 
we seek the word and we seek his truth to see what is the will of God for my life? What is um, my promise as a child of God? How do I walk in righteousness and faith to be walking in the security and the protection of God? You know, uh, that's something that I think about. How can I better equip myself, not only as a minister's wife, not only as a mother, as um, you know, a wife in general, as a Christian, I, I always seek the scripture. How can I be walking in God's will more perfectly? The scripture that we, the second one that we had looked at first John five eighteen, it says, we know that whoever is begotten of God sinneth not. And, um, you know, that was one of the things that stood out to me. How many times have I brought, um, or opened a door for the enemy to attack me because I allowed sin to come into my life or to stay in my life. Something that I justified by saying, oh, well, all Christians deal with this. And oh, all Christians, you know, feel this way every now and then. And, you know, a lot of ministers will deal with this. And, you know, a lot of people will go through this or accept that. And so I've really been seeking the word and 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 trying to be set apart trying to live above sin and a lot of people say well you know we've all sinned and fall short of the glory of god but according to this scripture it says whoever's begotten of god sinneth not so our goal even though we are going to make mistakes even though we are going to fail our goal is to walk forward and not sin. Our goal is to be like Christ, to be transformed by the renewing of our minds every day by the word, every day by prayer. Um, a very well-known quote is, whoever is sinning is not praying, and whoever is praying is not sinning. And so um, that's your encouragement for today. That is your encouragement to stay in the word, to declare the word, to know the word, to declare over your life. And to pray, to constantly be praying, to pray without ceasing, because that is how you keep yourself above sin, above reproach. That is the breastplate of righteousness. That is part of the armor. And so there's a lot of different parts to the armor. And so um, prayer, the word, the truth of the word, uh, the faith, you know, so many times I I look at the the word and um, it's funny because my dad and I were just talking about this the other day that, you know, Christianity is is not like witchcraft where there's a special magic saying that you say and, and things magically happen. But it's it's faith that activates miracles. It's faith that activates healing. And, you know, it's even the demons believe in the name of Jesus, even the demons believe that that Jesus heals, that his blood saves. And so there's this humility, there's this purity, there's this faith that needs to arise in us in order to walk in the protection of God, in order to walk in the abundance of God. And so I hope that all of you who are watching and who have been able to um, just hear this little devotional are encouraged and that you can connect with our ministry. Like I said, we're about to send out a newsletter that has um, some information about a persecuted nation we're going to. So um, this month's newsletter will not be shared on social media so that I can include some of that information. And as this devotional said, we are going because we believe in protection. We believe that God is sending our team there. We believe that we are going to move the kingdom of God there and equip the pastors there. I know the pastors are extremely excited that we're going and that we will be blessing them in, in many different ways. And so if you would like to know what's going on, where we're going and what we're doing and the different needs we have there, please share your email address. Um, like I said, either in this video or private message us or um, you can send an email address, your email address uh, to lrojas at miministries.org, or you can subscribe on miministries.org, which is our website. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in. I pray that you are blessed. Share the video if there's something that you 
feel someone you know can can grow from. Thank you, Grace, for, for joining in. Love you. I'm so glad we got to see you while we were here in Connecticut. And I hope that everyone has a blessed week and that this was a little nugget of encouragement, a little nugget of um, encouragement to read your word and to pray and to just believe in the truth that God protects and keeps us from the enemy. All right. God bless you guys. I'm just going to close in prayer. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for what you are doing in everyone's lives, everyone who's tuning in, any prayer requests right now that they may have, God, anything that they are going through, you know their trials or tribulations, God, you know any attacks of the enemy on their lives. Lord, I pray that this truth would give them a new prayer to say, I'm declaring the word, I'm walking in righteousness, I'm, I'm walking with the Lord, I am a child of God, and I'm going to receive and declare that protection over my life. I'm going to receive and declare the word, what the word says about my situation. I pray that you would just cover them this week, that you would be with them, that you would enlarge their hearts to love those around them and to love you and your word more. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right. Thanks, everyone. Love you. Um, be sure to share your email address if you haven't yet so that we can get you in the uh, insider loop on what's going on. All right. God bless you.